We join Mark Silver as he goes over a story about a recent time that he got a unique image. And then we answer questions from the AYP community. Hasselblad sent me this pretty amazing camera. This is the 907X. And this is essentially, if you see this back here, this is my original Hasselblad film camera. This is a back, by the way, that I can put on that camera. And, uh, but I, I can also use it by itself as a camera. And I was going out to test it a week or so ago. There was a, there was a, a storm, uh, not storm, but there were a lot of big waves. And I, I think I mentioned this before, but I, want, I thought I'd just tell you a little bit more in detail. So I decided I was going to go out with the 90 millimeter lens, okay, which is this one. So they sent me two lenses. One is a 45 and this is a 90, okay. Now, it really would have been better uh, until I got this shot anyway. It would have been better if I had the wider lens and I didn't bring other lenses. I didn't want to change... It's really dicey to change your lens out in the field, especially with this camera because it's got a huge sensor and I didn't want to get any dust on it. So I just brought one lens with me. And I was kind of walking along in an, a, a road, it's called Scenic Drive, that looks out over the ocean, but I was too sort of far back from it. And that's where a lot of people were standing up there with their iPhones shooting it from high up looking down it wasn't very interesting because you couldn't see in this case you couldn't see this wave right so i just kept going down lower i was visualizing it well what would it look like down there and i just kept going down lower and lower and finally got in a position and you know waited and and just kept pressing the shutter because i wanted i knew i wanted to get that wave like kind of rearing up like that with this you know framing the sun in this case and that's what what happened when i got done with that i knew that was the image i could feel it when i got done i looked up and there were all these people standing above me all kind of grouped together nobody had done what i was doing which was getting off the beaten track and go you know explore wait wait until you find that spot that's going to be different than everybody else's so there there's the moral of that story don't be afraid to move around definitely do something different than what other people are doing because otherwise you're just going to end up with what they've got okay jared so let's dive into our first question who is it and what is the question uh to kind of sum it up oh, yeah. the idea is when you're dealing with a conflict and you are part of one of the sides of the conflict. Yeah. Uh, so this was brought up by somebody. They, they wanted some insight, specifically the Israel-Palestine uh, conflict, which is pretty intense. Yeah. And they want, they're want they part of one side, and they want to work on a story related to kind of the other side, to put it in very simplistic terms. Right, okay. Um, and so, uh, and to put it into summary, I'm in doubt about how to navigate within these two conflicting narratives and how to approach people when doing this. Okay, so the best advice I can give you is, Samuel, is basically you're wearing a different hat. You're a photographer, and you may be on one side or the other side as a person living in that environment, but when you're now, wearing your hat as a photographer, you know, you don't have to take part in either side. And, you know, if we look at some advice from uh, Deanne Fitzmaurice, if you caught her interview like a few months ago, she was talking about being in Cuba and photographing some, some men on a corner. And they were a little bit like, who is this person with a camera? They're a little skeptical. And she made eye contact and just kind of let them know that she wasn't a threat to them. Somebody might say, well, yeah, she's a woman. That's going to be a lot easier. Maybe so, whatever. But still, it's the same thing. If you are, if you're basically keeping yourself out of that conflict and you are recording something, there is going to be that feeling. Ed Koshy also talked about that, that you can't just, um, you know, go into an environment, and just start firing photographs away. But you, 
you kind of let your presence be known that you're you're not necessarily the enemy for these guys. Um, you know, I, it's it's a little hard for me to give you advice not really knowing how you know intense it is or what the situation is, but that would be my general advice: is just recognize, and this is really important in a lot of different circumstances. You know, we can go from being, for instance, in a whole different setting. We go from being a tourist, you know, tr looking around at Paris, you know, from a tourist standpoint to being a photographer, different hat, okay? I'm, when I'm being a photographer, I'm not trying to carry on conversations about where we're going to go to lunch, for instance. That's like what a tourist would do. I'm focused, and lunch may not ever happen, because I'm focused on, you know, simply being there and capturing the, the photos that I want. Hope that helps. If it uh, doesn't answer your question, let me know. We'll bring on maybe Dan Milner to go into some more detail on that. I, I believe he would say something very similar. I was going to ask him if he could pop in, but he's off the grid for a week, so he said no. But I hope that helps. I think also to add just a little bit, and this comes from Dan, yeah, because um, Dan's talked about when you're doing long-term projects, it's really important to research. And oh, I yeah. would say, especially if you feel like you're on one particular side, I would say that you ought to especially research the other side. So that way, if you do come in contact with them and you're talking with them, you want them to feel like you understand where they're coming from. For sure. Otherwise, you're just going to be the other side. Yeah. Uh, so I would definitely encourage you to um, do research. Absolutely. And that's, you should always do research. Research is essential, doing... yes, to telling your story. you got to know what's going on. Know before you go. Yep. All right. Who's our next question? All right. Our next question comes from Sumit going to bring this in. So this is a question about a series of photographs. Uh, so they took a series of photographs for an Indian festival. Yeah. And uh, they'd done it before, but this time they wanted to do it again, but to focus on people who live in the slums and how they celebrate. And the celebration is all about uh, light over darkness, good over evil. And so they were shooting at an extreme ISO. Right. Uh, and so now, as you can see, the subjects are far away but lack details. Yeah. Uh, so they asked, do you have any tips for printing because I want to exhibit these? Yes. And I'll cycle so, through the photos. Yeah, what you've got is a lot of noise there because your, your ISO is high. And that's why we really, even with modern cameras, I've had people argue with me about this, but it, listen, there's noise in these modern cameras. I'm sorry. So... Uh, use the lowest ISO you can get away with. Okay, in this case, it's nighttime. You had to crank up the ISO, but you're getting a lot of noise there. So there's two things I would recommend. I'd go to, I'd use the Nick collection, and I would first of all handle that noise with uh, Define 2, which will reduce the noise. You can do that in Photoshop and Lightroom as well. It just does a really good job. And you can be more specific about where you want to reduce the noise. Like, for instance, in the sky, if we go back to the, I think that first one, uh, you can see uh, in that sky, you can that's where you're going to see most of the noise. It's not so visible down below because there's, you know, there's the grittiness of the sand and waves and stuff. But in the sky, it really becomes noticeable. So there's a setting in Define 2 just for sky, and we'll work on that. So I would reduce the noise, first of all. And then I would probably, because these are black and whites, I would develop them in Silver SilverFX Pro. And uh, what that will do, first of all, it's a great uh, editing or processing software for you know, turning color images into black and whites. You could also do something else. Um, and I'll answer that question in a second, Chris. Uh, you could do something else and change the noise, which I don't particularly find aesthetic. Noise is more of a random clumpy kind of look as opposed to grain in film can actually be part of the image. So you can change that in Silver Effects Pro 
over to a grain, which will make it look like it was shot with a film like Triax, for instance, which does have a beautiful look to it because it is, it is gritty. And you're out shooting stuff at night and you had to use a higher ISO or high, higher ISO film, or in this case, digital. You could, you know, then print it and it will look like you were shooting it with film on purpose. And that, those are just some ideas. But you've got a lot of cool things that you can try out in uh, Silver Effects Pro. First, you get rid of the noise, then you go into Silver Effects. Pro and you can process it and you know try those different grains and um, it's fun because you get to also you can emulate different film like you could emulate they have Triax in there I believe you can you can put that in there and see what it looks like I just do everything based on well how you know what does this look like to me do I want it to look like this I don't like noise you know uh, I want to get rid of it. So you can only get rid of so much in this case, but then you can, again, you can turn it into a film look, which could look really cool. So that's what I would recommend to you. And then you go ahead and print it. And it will, it'll look like you took a series at night, which you did. And we're, we're, you know, reducing the distraction of the noise. So there you have it. And I we really do... We do have do... a couple people in the chat who are kind of pointing out, you know, you could try using uh, noise as an artistic expression. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about that? I just never found that that works. I, to me, noise is noise. It's like, uh, you know, if we're recording music and there's a hum, I, I, I don't know that I, you know, I would do everything I can, as Jared knows, to get rid of it because I find it distracting. I, I don't know that I've ever seen noise. This is my own opinion. If you feel differently, fine. I think noise looks ugly and is distracting. Now, we had Scott Kelby on a while ago, and he said, you know, a lot of people just get obsessed by, it. oh, you know, you got to reduce it, and you're maybe the only one that notices that. That could be true as well, but sometimes it is for sure noticeable. Like in this case, I, you know, the noise, to me, pulls my eye to the noise rather than what's going on with this photograph. So I... I'd say get rid of noise. Use, uh, you know, if you want to use grain, great. Go for a grainy look, which is very different than digital noise. So there you've, you've had it. <laughs> you, you have my, that's my opinion. And listen, a lot of the art form of photography is solely and only your own opinion. If you are in love with noise, use it. If you don't like it, get rid of it. It's that simple. It's, it's, your, it's your artistic expression, not mine. We hope that you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a like and leave a comment. We love to hear from you. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you can know when all of our future videos come out. And finally, be sure to get out there and capture your own images of life.